Hi there and welcome to Delicious Art. My name is Jeannie Cotter. If you haven't been to one of my classes previously, either online or in person, then I'll just give you a little bit of a rundown on what my classes are all about. So my classes are designed for uh, adult beginners and we learn to paint with soft pastels. So uh, I've been teaching that for about five years now. Um, and my classes were all in person up until COVID hit us here in Australia. And then I took my classes online. Um, initially, they were only for people who attended my class on a Zoom, but um, I've since started to upload a few of them onto YouTube. So obviously you found me right there. So thank you for joining me. And um, you are welcome to paint along with me today. So these classes that I do are designed to paint along with me. And I talk about each stage as we go. So if you are interested in painting with pastels or you already have, and you just want to have a bit of a class and a lesson, then I would love for you to join me. So let's get started. I'm just going to change my screen over so that you can see what I'm doing on my desk and I will talk our way through the class. So welcome to today's class. We're painting with this cherry. So if you have downloaded the, um, the class, then you may have received or um, I'm not sure how I'm going to connect that to YouTube videos, but I'll see if I can add some files on there. And if I can, then I will include um, a notes page, which is just a notes about what we're going to do in the class today. And we're painting our cherry and also a reference image. So that's the image that we'll be painting today. It's always great if you've got your reference nearby. So if you don't receive the files, then um, perhaps you could email me and I'll send through the images for you because it's really a great way to just have them handy so that you can see it as you paint and refer back to it all the time. So let's get started. All right, I'm just gonna share my screen. So bear with me while I sort that out. Just got to click a couple of buttons and make that come on. And if all goes well, in one moment, you should see my table. There we go. Lovely. So that's um, an iPad that I've got suspended above my desk. So I can now uh, show you what I'm painting and talk about all the bits and pieces as we go. Um, just a quick little intro about a few of the materials that I use for my soft pastel classes. So obviously you, um, your notes and your reference picture are important. Um, and as I said, I'll send those through to you if I can't get them attached to the video. I haven't tried to do that yet, so we'll see how we go. Um, and the other thing I wanted to talk to you was about some of the equipment that we use. So. Paper is a really important aspect of what you do with pastels. If you use, if you try to use just regular drawing paper or cartridge paper, pastels won't stick to it. So if you've ever tried to do that and wondered what, what all the fuss is about and why pastels are so great, it may well be because you haven't used the correct paper. So what you need to use with pastels is paper that's got texture. So this is a color fix paper. It's an Art Spectrum brand. And they come in all kinds of colors, which is really cool. So you don't just paint onto white paper, you can paint onto all different colored paper, which is really exciting because then you can kind of determine the background colors and figure out um, you know, what, what uh, colors are in the image that you're gonna paint. And then you can sort of work in the colored paper with that. Saves you a whole lot of work if you don't want to fill in the background each time. So these are just a few examples. This is the brand here, Art Spectrum. Um, this is obviously called Blue Haze, this colour. And this one's called Rose Grey. So I bought the whole pack. That's why I've got whole packs here. <laughs> you can buy it for sheets individually, usually in an art shop. So there's a green, there's a... Um, color and there's purple there's black and there's also white too if you want white so I really like working on dark papers especially when I'm doing a single item like this because it just allows me to enhance all the colors really nicely 
but we're going to go neutral today. So a good neutral or mid-tone, as I call it, is something like this, which is going to kind of uh, let the red of the cherry stand out and also the green and will allow us to put a little bit of a shadow underneath it as well. So it'll look like it's popping off the page. So a neutral colour is really good if you've got strong darks and bright lights and a little bit of shadow. So I always like to go for neutrals when that's the case. Um, I also love working on black and blues are great for things with sky and ocean. So lots of options. The other thing about this paper is that it's gritty. So it actually feels like a really fine sandpaper. And so, as I mentioned before, when you're working with pastels, you actually need something with texture. So you'll notice when we start working on this, it'll sound a bit scratchy. Um, if you're not into texture and getting filthy hands, you can see my hands are already dirty and I've hardly done anything yet. Um, but if you don't enjoy the feeling of having dirty hands and, and dirty fingernails and you don't like the texture of things, then pastels might not be the medium for you. But if you like you get to get your hands into it, to feel it and really push it around with your fingers, then you'll probably love pastels because that's what I love about them. All right, so just pop all this paper aside for now. So that's our paper for today. One of the other very handy things you might want is a, a roll of paper towel. It's just great to wipe your pastels clean with and also to wipe your fingers on. So you should just usually cut off a piece like that and have it handy nearby for my project. Um, the other groovy thing that you will need is some masking tape. Um, and that is to actually tape our paper down onto a little board. And that's the other thing you'll need. So I've just got this filthy little board that obviously has been well loved and used a lot. It fits nicely with my A4 paper. So this is A4. I forgot to mention sizes. So your paper comes in A3, A4, and then you have a bigger sheet, which is about 56 by 70 centimeters from memory. There are other papers, of course, Art Spectrum is not the only brand, but um, it's probably the most accessible one that I can get my hands on and quite affordable. They work out at this size, A4 size is about $2.20 a sheet, I think. Okay, so you need tape because what we wanna do is tape your paper onto your board. So when you do that, this area around the edge of the paper is, is just normal paper. So sometimes when you tear the tape off after you've finished your painting, it can tear this part. So what I like to do is get a bit of tape like this and just stick it down onto my tablecloth or my clothing or whatever. It just makes it slightly less sticky. And that way it's less chance of tearing my paper. So you can choose to tape your paper down all the way around, or you can just tape down the corners or you can just tape down a couple of sides. So I'll just do my sides today. I'm just going to pop that on there like that, cut that off or tear it, whatever's easier, and then lift that up. It's just got a little bit less adhesive on there now. So, and don't press down too hard. We just really want to tape it down so that your paper doesn't move around while you're working on it. The other option, of course, is to work on an easel. So um, usually when I am painting uh, and not teaching, I'll be standing at an easel because pastels are very dusty and as you work you'll find quite a lot of dust will gather on your page so if you're on an easel it just kind of drops down with gravity so it doesn't kind of interfere too much um, that would be my preferred way of working but because I'm sitting here on a computer it's just a little bit easier to have everything flat so that you guys can see it properly all right so now we've got our paper taped down um, and as I said, don't push it down too hard. Also, if you do that, don't leave the tape on for too long. So don't let it sit there for weeks and weeks because it can start to stick too much and tear the sides. The other thing to um, think about too is when you do, do remove your tape at the end of your painting, pull it away from the painting. So if it is going to tear, it'll tear outwards rather than in because sometimes it can tear all the way in and lift everything up and then your painting's completely ruined. So we've got that taped down. I've got my little bit of paper towel handy. 
So I'll just keep that nearby to wipe my fingers on too. Scissors I don't need anymore so they can go away. And um, I don't need a ruler today so that can also go away. The other groovy thing you might want to invest in if you haven't already is some charcoal sticks. So these are willow charcoal sticks. Willow charcoal is very soft. They're a bit, it's a bit of a messy little container because they sit in here all the time. So I probably should put a new bit of paper in there. But your charcoal stick is what I like to use for my drawing. So when I'm first drawing up my image, I like to use a little bit of charcoal. Why I, don't, I like that is because it's really easy to get off my paper. So once you've done your outline of whatever it is you're going to do, like that, for instance, then if I want to remove it later, it's really easy to take off. So you can see how that's just coming off really nicely with my kneadable eraser. So charcoal is a lovely medium. You can use it with pastel. They work really well together. And it's also nice and easy to remove. Um, if you're working on a dark paper and you want to do an outline, then a white charcoal pencil is a really good option. So this is a General's brand and um, they're like hen's teeth. They're a bit hard to get sometimes. So if you see them, grab a couple. And again, you can do your outlines with your white pencil if you're working on darker paper. So always handy to have a white one and some willow charcoal. So you can see that, rem that removes quite easily. The harder you press, the harder it is to get off. Um, but if you just go lightly when you're first sketching up, then it's, it's pretty good. So there are my little loose bits of charcoal. Um, I've also got, what else is in there? Well, that's just a blender that I use sometimes with my pan pastels, but we're not doing pans today. And that's a very dirty kneadable eraser. <laughs> so kneadable eraser is the other groovy thing that will be helpful for you with pastels. This is a used one. This is a very used one. So you can see as they get used a lot, they get really, really dirty and it feels a little bit like blue tack. This is a new one, just so you know what they look like before you get them filthy dirty. You can get a couple of brands. It's a favorite pastel there. I think Stadler also do a nice one. Um, but what the beautiful thing is, is you can pull pieces off. So it feels exactly like blue tack and it's kneadable. So when you say kneadable, that means it's an eraser that will actually pick up all the pigment off your page without damaging your paper. So you know when you normally rub um, paper with an eraser and you get all those little bits of crumbs on there, that's the paper that's actually being rubbed away. But with the kneadable erasers, they take the pigment off and they don't harm the paper. So they're really great for pastels and charcoal. Fabulous they are. And they're great for blending too. You can do all sorts of group groovy things with these. As I said, this is a really dirty old one. Once they get really grubby, you want to throw it out. But what you do to use it is you might, you know, do a bit of a mark and then I'll use my kneadable eraser to get that off. See, as I'm doing it, it's picking up the pigment on the eraser. And so it's coming off the paper, but it's sticking to my eraser. And then if I put it down again, it's going to probably stain my paper. So you've got to keep kneading it or, you know, massaging it so that you find a nice clean side and then you can pick up a bit more and then see how that's dirty again. Then knead it a little bit more and then pick up that. So you can carry on doing that until you've got nice clean paper and all your marks removed that you want to take away. And then keep just kneading it or massaging it until you've picked it all up. So you just need to keep kneading it to find a clean part on the eraser. And so of course, after doing that for quite a while, they get really grubby. So you just toss that away and start with a new one. So it's quite exciting when you open a new one. It's almost like, like Christmas. You think, oh my goodness, it's special. They're about 250 each, so not super expensive. Um, but handy to have, really, really good little tool. So that's the eraser and the white pencil. And next thing we'll talk about is uh, the pastels. So these are the few pastels that I've chosen for today's class. And I'm going to attach a swatch sheet, which I prepared earlier um, 
for the class as well. So hopefully I'll figure out how to do that. And we're going to keep the colours pretty basic today. So pastels come in all kinds of brands and I've got a few different ones in here. This one is an Art Spectrum Extra Soft. So they're a lovely square sort of shape pastel. They're really nice to use and they're very soft. That's the same brand. So red and purple. Um, the yellow would probably be an Art Spectrum brand as well, but they're not extra soft. They're just soft, but they're still beautiful to work with. Um, Art Spectrum is probably what I've got most of, simply because I worked at Art Shed in Brisbane and that was what we stopped there. So it was easy to get. Um, and of course, green is Art Spectrum. This little one here, I love this brand. It's called Blue Earth. So I picked up those when I was at the Pastel Expo in Caloundra about three years ago. Um, and there's another one on next year in Caloundra, Sunshine Coast. So if you're interested in attending that, it's just the most phenomenal three days of pastel classes and workshops and demonstrations. It's fabulous. So um, have a look for that. It's the Pastel Society of Australia running that. Anyway, this is Blue Earth Pastels and I just love them. They're super creamy, beautiful to use, and the colours are gorgeous. And then this one here is a Rembrandt. So Rembrandt is a harder pastel. It's still considered a soft pastel, but it's a little bit firmer. It feels a bit more like a pencil than pastel. So it's good for your harder lines. And then, of course, I've got a little bit of white there. It's probably also an art spectrum. Um, obviously you've got to rip the labels off because you know you as you're using them the labels get in the way so um, most of them don't have any names on them anymore so sometimes it's a bit hard to remember what's what so that's our little palette for today so if you're working along with me today you want to pick out yourself um, a red and a dark purple so the dark purple we're going to be using in the shadow of the cherry so down here in the darker areas will be where we put the purple, possibly some green as well, and the red for the mo most part of the cherry. And yellow will give us a little bit of a shine, but it'll also contribute to the stem of the cherry. And then we've got a couple of greens there, or three greens. I've got a dark green, a mid and a light. So we'll use those in the leaf and um, probably some of the purple down in the shadow as well. And the, the white will just be for the little highlights. I like to save my white for last. So if you have white and you want to use that for your brightest um, sections, then save it for last because um, you can't get whiter than white. So you probably hear me say that a few times if you, if you keep attending my videos and classes. I've also got a whole bunch of um, online video classes on my website, which is deliciousart.com.au under the shop tag. And um, in there, they're 1950 for a class, but they go for about two hours. You get your notes, you get your reference image, and you get a full-on instructional class like we're about to do now. So um, if you're looking for other classes, there's about 30 in there already. All right, let's get going with this. So if you've got all your pastels ready to go, that would be fabulous. Just keep them nearby so you can see them and reach them easily. You want to keep your reference photo close by as well. I'll just move everything over so it all fits onto the screen. Okay, so reference picture, board, lovely. All right, that's all looking good. The other thing you might want to um, get ready before you start is a little, this is a, just a little old towel that I've torn up and wet. So a wet towel on one end is really handy. So if you wet it on one end, you can clean your fingers off because they do get really dirty and then keep the other end dry so you can dry them and then carry on with your artwork. So a little, little towel or um, cloth or something like that is really good just to keep keeping your fingers nice and clean. And I just keep that over to the side. I'm left-handed, so if everything feels like it should be on the other side, that's why. So I've just got to work with what you got, hey? All right, so let's get cracking. The first part of the class today is drawing up the cherry. So what we want to do is look at the shape of this and figure out how much of the page we want to fit it into and then draw up the shape. So I'm going to grab a bit of charcoal. I like to use sort of longish sticks um, so that 
if you hold it at the end rather than don't hold it tight like you would a pen or a pencil hold it at the end fairly loose and that keeps your mark quite light so if you want to remove it it's easier to get off and it also helps you to uh, relax a little bit and not be too uptight about it all so let's figure out where this cherry is going to sit what we want to do is just put in a little bit of a, a mark for the stem so you can see on the top of the stem it's got a little um, bobbly bit there and then it comes down in a very slight curve so we just want to do a very slight curve something like that see how i'm pressing really lightly so i always go light first and then once i'm sure of my mark and happy with where it all is then I can start to bring in the, the colour and be more defined with it. So let's do the shape of the cherry. Now this is an interesting little shape so that it's not perfectly round, okay? So we have to look at the shape of the cherry and see that it kind of comes around like this. So if you draw your line around like that, and we can bring the stem down into it afterwards, don't worry if it's up too high like I've done. So see that little shape there? So we've got this beautiful shoulder of the cherry and then in front of the stem, we've got this sort of little S bend that comes around in that direction like that. That's this bit here. So just coming around through there. And then we're just going to continue the shape down. So see how it kind of tapers down, gets a little bit narrower at the base and it's wider at the shoulder. So just be aware of that as well. So we're coming down into the bottom, rounding it around like that. So it's a little bit narrower down here then we're going to come up into this other shoulder i'm going to start back up here now so in behind where the stem meets the cherry and then up so we've got this beautiful lush kind of shape so that's the kind of shape you want to have um, with your cherry so and now we've got that done we can kind of bring the stem down into the base now, if I'm going too quickly, don't hesitate to pause and catch up, okay? That's the beauty of video. You can actually do it at your own pace. All right, so it's quite a big cherry, but I really love this lush red cherry. So I wanna make it sort of big and bold and delicious, okay? So that's our basic shape. Next, we're gonna put the leaf in. So if you look at the leaf, you can see it comes down like that. And then we've got this little, section in the light green and then the larger section in the dark green so it's sort of basically a line that comes down through here and probably over to about there so if you mark in about where it's going to come to on the end and then where it's going to begin from kind of gives you a bit of a guide to put your line on like that okay so that's around about where my chair my leaf is going to sit and then if I look at where the leaf begins, so there's a little stem in there coming out from this main stem from the leaf. And then we're going to do the bottom section. So that this is the darker green section. And again, looking at the shape of that. So it kind of curves down just above the, the shoulder of the cherry. And then it comes up and into this gorgeous little tip at the end like that. So I've got this lovely little curve just here. Gorgeous. So that's the main part of the leaf. And then the folded over section is actually inside this area as well. So it's just, again, another little curve that comes down like that. So at the moment, we've just got a basic line drawing. And you can see that charcoal is really beautiful on this paper too. So if you're into charcoal, have a look for the color fix paper um, because it works really nicely on there if you, if you want these beautiful toned colors. It's fabulous. All right, so there we go. I think we're just about ready now to start putting some color on. Um, and that'll probably be the only time we want to use charcoal, unless we maybe might use it down here in the shadow later on, but we'll see how we go. So I'm going to pop that aside for now. Just give your fingers a little clean on your paper towel because they do get dirty with the charcoal. See, they've got black on them already and um, they'll get worse, trust me. <laughs> I'm just going to pop my charcoal over there and get my pastels nearby. So um, 
I've got my pastels in a little box. So when I'm doing an image like this, I like to select my colors on my palette, put them in a separate box so that they don't get mixed up with all my other ones. Then if I don't um, get finished, I can always come back and I know exactly what colors I used. So each of my paintings have, has, a, has its own little box or palette. And it's great because then I don't have to remember what I used and um, it just makes it a whole lot easier. The other amazing thing with pastels is that they never dry up or go off or anything like that. So you can actually have a painting on an easel for months and it won't ever change. Um, so it's lovely because you don't need to wash any brushes. The only thing you've got to wash is your hands and um, maybe a blender or two. And you can just leave it there and come back to it at any time. And I love that. I can pick up a pastel and do it for five minutes or I can stand there for an hour. Doesn't really matter. So I really like the convenience of that. It's probably the one thing that drew me to, to pastels because I don't like cleaning up and washing brushes and stuff. So have a little box like that. Keep it separate from all your other pastels and then you'll know which ones you've been using. And it's just easy then to keep it aside and, and continue on when you're ready. All right, let's get started. So we're going to do the fun bit first, which is the cherry. So grab your red pastel. Now we'll all have different brands and we'll all have different colors. So if it's not exactly the same color as mine, don't stress, doesn't matter. It might be pinker, it might be purpler, it might be brighter red. If you've got a better red than this, tell me because I cannot find enough reds. So what I'm going to do now is just lie the pastel down. This is a big chunky square one. So I'm, I'm getting a fairly decent coverage with it and see how, because the paper's quite gritty and it's got that texture on it, see how it sort of doesn't fill it all up yet? But don't stress, that's okay. We're gonna fill it up in a minute. What you wanna do is just lay it down your pastel as best you can. And again, it'll depend on what kind of pastels you're using too. So if your pastels are very hard or perhaps cheap, <laughs> they might not be sort of sticking as well as you'd like them to. So there is definitely a massive difference in good pastels and cheap pastels. Um, so, you know, if, you, if you're serious about doing it, then it's definitely worth buying the good stuff because the cheap ones from the $2 shops just won't cut it for you. They won't do what you need them to do and then you'll be unhappy with it and you'll hate pastels and you won't know why pastels are so great until you use a really beautiful pastels. So it is definitely worth investing. All right, so if you filled up your area like that, so you've got a nice red coverage, you'll, you'll notice there'll be some gaps and spaces and holes in there because you're on textured paper. And there are different kinds of papers as well. So if you don't have this particular one, you might be using something else that's designed for pastels. That's absolutely fine. Some of them have like a, um, a chicken wire kind of pattern on them. Uh, some are more gritty. You can get more gritty paper than this. So it feels like rough sandpaper. It's a bit rough on your fingers though. And you can get a beautiful one called pastel mat, which is feels like velour. It's beautiful paper to work on. And you can really layer up your pastels on that. So it's much smoother. All right, once you've got your color on there, what we're gonna do is blend it all in. So you just want to pick a finger, any finger, and just run your finger around and it should start being pushed in like this. So see how now that's starting to fill up all the little holes in the paper and I'm getting a nice coverage on there. While I'm doing this, I kind of like to think about the shape of the thing that I'm blending or filling in. And so because this is a kind of a round shape, I want to do little round movements. I want to pull that pigment around in a round direction so that it starts to kind of feel like it's got that beautiful roundness to it. Okay. So I always try to think about the thing I'm painting and pull the pastel in the direction of the shape of the thing that I'm doing. All right. So you can see we've lost most of our little... S shape in there, but that's okay. We'll get it back. Don't stress. All right. Now you might feel like you need to add another layer if that hasn't quite filled up your paper enough. And sometimes it doesn't, depending on what kind of pastel you use. As I said, some pastels are harder 
Um, they're still really good quality, but they're a harder pastel. So they're not as kind of creamy as some. And so it might take a couple of coats to fill up your paper. So if that's the case, just come back now with your red again, put more on. So you can literally just push more onto the paper to get that nice and thick and lush. Beautiful, I love red, it's my favorite color. Okay, and now I can again come back in with my finger and push that in again. So generally on this kind of paper, you can, as if you're blending like this, you can probably get three or four layers on there before it won't take any more. So if you start off light, I like to start off fairly light with my layering, depending on what I'm doing. But um, today we just wanted to fill this up with lots of red, so I didn't start too light. But generally, if you know you're going to be layering a fair bit, then you might want to just go lightly with each layer as you build it up. Okay, so that's all pushed in now. So push that in, get it nice and lush and thick and red, really bright and beautiful. And then we can start playing with some tone and shadows. So I love working in tone. It's just exciting. It brings things alive. So as you can see right now, that's just looking like a big flat, nothing much, big red blob. So it hasn't got any tone. It doesn't look 3D. It doesn't look like something I could pick up. It hasn't got any shine on there. But we're going to do that next. So remember we talked about using purple to get that beautiful darkness in there. So this is my dark purple and it's also an Art Spectrum Extra Soft. So it's very, very rich and I don't want to put too much down yet. So what we're going to do is build it up gently, gently. And you can see the bottom of the cherry is the darkest area, okay? So I'm just going to lie it down there. So if you're working flat, it's good because you can sort of lie your pastel on top of your paper and then just gently pull it around. And what we want to do is get a bit of purple just on the bottom area. So down and around through here. Okay, not too much. Don't go crazy yet. All right, put that aside. And then, then we're going to start to blend it, but you want to blend it in the same direction. So we want to make it lovely and round. Pull that up into the red. So what we were trying to do is create this sort of gradual effect from dark to light. See how that's starting now to look like it's got a little bit of body and tone and texture. Okay, because it will also need to convey that this is a smooth, glossy, shiny thing. So just by putting that little bit of dark around the bottom there has really brought that to life, hasn't it? We haven't finished yet, but it's really brought that to life. And if careful not to pull too much of the dark to the top area, because we want to try and keep that fairly light if we can and keep the bottom of it dark. So that will um, yeah, help to bring it to life. So I'm just wiping my finger off in between wipes and just get that excess dust off onto my paper towel. Also got my little wet cloth over there that I can also wipe my fingers onto to try and get them nice and clean. So when you're working in between colors, it's not doesn't matter yet so much because we're still in the reds. But when we go into the greens, you want to probably make sure you've got reasonably clean fingers. Otherwise we're going to make mud because red and green make beautiful mud. But we don't want too much mud today. Speaking of which, let's try, let's just try this. See your dark green? I'm gonna pop a little bit of that in here. Now, as I said, dark green and red and green make mud. So what they make are beautiful grays, really lovely grays. So just zhoosh a little bit of your dark green around. So too, not too much. See how I've just laid a little bit on there? And then I'm gonna push that in as well. That just creates a little bit more of a kind of a shadowy color, um, changes it up a, a tiny bit. See how we've got this lovely shadow that kind of comes up here into this middle area. So I thought we'd try green in there and just see what that looks like. Now, if you feel like you're losing the brightness of your red, don't stress, we can put more red on if we need to. So it's, it's gonna be okay. 
sometimes you get too muddy and you think, oh my goodness, I've just lost all that beautiful color I had because I muddied it up too much. If that's the case, you can always pop more on top. That's looking okay right now, pretty good. All right, so what we wanna do next is find that little S shape. See that little S with the shine on it there? Remember I said to save your lights for last? Well, this is where the little bit of light's gotta go. So rather than putting that in straight away, I might still save it for last, but if you've got a pencil or even, let's try charcoal actually bit of charcoal, we just want to mark that in again. So you'll find as you work with pastels that you'll have to keep sort of drawing back in um, the shapes because you kind of go over them and lose them a little bit. So that's the kind of shape we want to get back in there. And then once you've got that little S back in there and we'll, we'll put white on there afterwards to brighten it up. See, there's a little bit of shadow down here where the stem meets the cherry so I just want to put a bit more purple in there and once you've got a, a little bit of purple in there right and you know you're, we're using fingers like you would use a paintbrush so the fingers will pull this out and blur it off and soften it a little bit so you put a little bit of color just there and then grab your finger put it down and pull it up pull the pad of your finger up so that you're sort of just creating this gentle shadow kind of effect through there. See how that's softened right off? And so now when we sink our stem down into that, it's going to look like it's going down in behind this bit. And when we put the light on that afterwards, that'll really brighten it up. All right. Now, remember I talked about dust before. So because I'm working flat on my table, I'm getting a fair bit of dust around the edges there. It's kind of loose dust. And sometimes it doesn't all blend in like you'd want it to. If that's happening to you um, and you've got a little cloth nearby or even a bit of paper towel, I've got an old cloth here on the end of my table. So I'm going to get this and I'm going to tip it up. I'll just show you on the screen how I'm going to do it. It's my paper towel to show you as an example. Okay, tip this up on its side and just bang it on your table. And see how the dust kind of comes off? So now I don't have as much loose dust sitting on there. That's the only probably downfall with pastels is that it's very dusty and it can kind of get smudgy. If you're not attached to sharp, hard lines and being too precise, you'll be fine. So <laughs> it's probably another reason they suit me actually, because I like to do things a little bit loose. All right, so um, yeah, good to keep a little towel or paper towel or something next to you that you can just tip off your dust and throw it away later. Or you can save it and make more pastels, but that's another lesson for another day. Okay, it's just gonna soften up those edges a little bit. All right, so you can see my edges are a bit messy, but we'll come back and sort them out later. So we've got this cherry happening. It's looking pretty nice. Now we wanna work on the stem. Okay, so what I wanna do is grab my probably my hard pastel for this one. So this is my hard Rembrandt, it's my lightest green. And I would just wanna draw the stem in with that because, because this is hard. See, I'm getting a fairly good hard line with that. I'm pressing pretty firm on the paper. And I'm just gonna pull that down, press pretty hard to make it stick to the paper. Pull that down through there. And then in a minute, we'll come into the, Cherry, I just want to make it slightly wider. Should have turned my phone on to silent, shouldn't I? I'll do that now. There we go. Okay, bring that down into the cherry. So just keep dragging it down, press fairly hard because what we want to do now is get this nice bright green to sort of sit on top of the red. Sometimes it's a bit tricky to get your light colors to be light when you're going over a dark. Okay, so we've brought that down inside the cherry. So now it's starting to look like it's all connected. When you get um, a bit of red on the end of your pastel like that, see how that's gone red? If I put that back down again, it's gonna put it back onto my page. And if I want pure color, that's gonna kind of muddy it up. So again, with your little bit of paper towel, very handy, this bit of paper towel, just give it a clean and you'll get a nice 
clean end back onto your pastel. So then you can put it back down and press hard again. Again, it picks up more red. So there's this kind of to and fro with cleaning off the ends of your pastels if they're getting contaminated is what they say, contaminated with other colours. So that's coming down there inside and I just want to widen it up here as it meets the cherry. See how this, the bottom of the stem on the cherry on the picture sort of widens off to the right like that. There we go. So that's looking okay. Might pop a bit of yellow on there afterwards and see if I can get that a bit brighter. Cool. So while I've got this light green in my hand, I'm just gonna fill in this section here. This is the light green side of the leaf. Again, this, as I said, this is quite a hard pastel, so it's not going on as softly or as gently as the, the red did, but that's okay. All pastels are different and they all serve a different purpose. So your hard pastels are really good for your finer lines and your harder marks. There we go. So I'll leave that as it is for now. Clean off my finger. I've got red all over, see red, filthy fingers. This is when I'm gonna get my little damp towel and try and give them a clean. Get some of the red off there because I want to have this green as pure as I can to start with. And then to get a bit of shadow and things in there, we can then add greens and purples. Okay, so my hands are cleaner. <laughs> Never be spotless, that's for sure. All right. So once they once they're cleaner and dry, then you can um, blend. So I just want to push this in a little bit. So there are different ways to use pastels. You don't always have to blend. Um, a lot of people are opposed to blending. I like using a combination of blending and not, but today we're doing mostly blending. Okay, so don't worry if you go outside the lines, we can clean that up after. See, I'm getting more dust along the edges there too. So I'm just gonna tip that off. So you've got to kind of to keep doing that if you're working flat. As I said, if you're on an easel, it should just drop down into the little tray at the bottom of your easel. All right, so that's my light green. Now I'm gonna pick up my dark green and I just wanna fill in this bottom section. So we're just working in really basic shapes today. Um, and everything is a shape. So no matter what you're painting, if you can kind of change the, the, your brain and look at it as a shape, then it just makes it so much easier to draw. Okay, so I've got all my green section outlined. This is a fairly large, chunky bit of green. It's quite a beautiful pastel. I'm not sure what that is. It's really soft. It must be something else that I don't normally use, but it's just really soft and creamy. So that's filling up my paper nicely and it's not sounding too scratchy. So you'll notice that the drier pastels will sound scratchy, whereas the creamier ones, not so much. Okay, so I've filled all that in is looking good put that down and I want to blend that in again blend that in here so it doesn't really matter which finger you use I find if I'm doing delicate work I'll probably go for my ring finger or my little finger and then larger areas I'll use my pointer or my middle finger just kind of depends on which one's cleanest at the time okay so we've got all that in there it's the trickiest part is not going outside the edges too much if you can help it. So that's looking okay. Got more dust, I'm gonna tip it off. So you'll end up tipping your dust off quite a lot as you go along. Um, the other thing I wanted to say too was try not to blow it. It's not a good thing to breathe in and you don't want it all over you desk or your table or your house because it's just dirty easy to clean off like it will wash off off your skin um, and it comes off clothes usually but if you keep putting it putting it on the one spot like my apron for instance then it, it eventually stains and won't wash out properly um, but it is water soluble and it will come off but it's just better not to spread it all through the house so try to tip your dust off and not blow it off 
Um, you might be used to blowing it because, you know, that's what you've done at school with other erasers and things. And it's really hard not to. I've been doing classes for five years and I have to say if every single class, I've got to say don't blow it and someone always does because <laughs> you just forget. <laughs> so try hard not to. All right. So we've got our leaf filled in. Hopefully you've got that done by the time we're finished yabbering away there. Now see under the leaf there in this section here, it's slight shadow. So what we want to do is try to create what this looks like a folded sort of leaf. So we need to get a little bit of shadow up here on the dark green section and under that light section, because obviously the light is coming from above. So I can tell that because of where the shine is on the cherry and where it's darkest. So it's darkest underneath and it's lightest on the top. So therefore the light must be shining from above. So that means we're gonna have shadow under this folded section of the leaf. It's not very strong. You can make it stronger if you want more drama. I like drama in my art. Or you can just do it really subtly. So I'm gonna try, I'll show you what red does actually. So again, we're gonna put some red on the green that will make a lovely kind of muddy, dark color. So whenever you want to pop shadow into green, red is a great option and so is purple. So just, just put a little bit of red across through there, just very lightly. If you've got a creamy pastel, you just want to press fairly light, put a little bit on, okay? Because then we're going to push it in with fingers and we want to kind of merge it back out into this other green so that it sort of blends in there gently and it's not too strong. So what you want to do is get the pad of your thing, finger and you want to get it right on the edge there between the light green and the red section and pull it towards the, the darker green. So see how we're just pulling it across through there? And as you do that, it should just gradually sort of blend into the other green. Well, not yet, but we'll work on it. So put the pad of your finger on the edge there and pull it across. So we're just creating this really subtle little shadow. It doesn't have to be very strong. And these are the things you want to look for when you're doing your art, is, you know, the subtle shadows, very gentle little differences in tone that bring things to life. How good does that look? See, that just made that top of that leaf pop and didn't it? It now looks like it's casting a shadow onto the other half of the leaf. So see, it doesn't take very much at all. Now, the other thing I want to show you is um, blenders. So sometimes your finger's too big and you're thinking, oh, my finger's too fat. I can't get into this pointy bit. Invest in some blenders. These are just a little Montmartre brand. Um, they're not called blenders, they're called something else. Shapers, I think. They come in a set of six. I think I've only got five here, Maybe the other one went too. But they come in a set of six. No, they're all, all much the same. Um, and they all have different ends on them. So you've got this shape here, which is cool, right? So, and then they've got a beautiful pointy one. This really pointy one is great for getting into the small bits. This one's cool. It's got like this triangular sort of knife edge on it. And that's the same as the first one. And then this is like a flat, flat edge. So a set of six of these Montmartre shapers, um, find them online, are about $15 or something. So they're really worth buying. And they're wonderful for getting into the pointy bits. So I'm going to use my pointy one. So see in here, this is where I can't get my finger into. I can actually use my blender just to push the pastel around and push it into the paper so that the tooth of the paper is holding onto it. There we go. So it's, it's got like a rubber tip on it. So it feels a little bit like fingers and skin. You can use blenders a lot if you get the hang of it. I prefer my, to use fingers, but um, they're, they're very, very handy for getting into the corners of things. And again, you can just give them a little wipe on your paper towel and that gets you know most of the pigment off and then you can use them again in other, other areas. So for instance, down here where the stalk meets the cherry, 
can kind of blend it in through there. You can even pull colours through. So, you know, I can come down through the stem here and pull that down and kind of sharpen up that edge a little bit more. So they're, they're great, these blenders. Any, any rubber tip blender is fine. Art Spectrum also make, make um, blenders. They're a little bit more expensive. They're beautiful quality. But I'll find these are good enough usually. Okay, we just keep wiping it off and carrying on. So, so that's a really good uh, tool to have in your toolkit. Groovy. Okay, so now we've got the leaf going on. We've got a bit of a lovely little shadow in there, which is nice. And we want to put some of those um, veins in there. Now, the ideal thing to use would be a pencil, if you happen to have the right coloured pencil. Um, and I probably do, but I'll, I'll just stay here <laughs> and use my pastel. So you can see your pastel, pastels are, are chunky usually. So it's pretty hard to get a fine line, but you can sometimes because you can find a little edge. So on the, on the tip there, it's kind of uneven. It's got flat sections on there because I've been using it. And so I'm going to try and make a fine line and just find a little edge. And you just got to hold it lightly and just pull it down. And I don't want to press too hard because these are really gentle little lines. If you look at your picture, you can see there's some really light vein lines through there. And we don't want to make them too strong. Just keep them soft. You can see I'm hardly touching the paper. I'm not pressing it at all. I'm just putting it on the paper and pulling it because this is a hard pastel, it's making a really nice mark. That's perfect, isn't it? And then you can see there's all these other little spidery um, lines that all sort of join together. So you can just do a few. You don't have to do all of them. Just a few to indicate that they're there. And that might be plenty. So now my leaf is looking pretty nice. Pretty nice. No, indeed. I might just grab my blender and see if I can clean up the edge of that around there. See how it's a bit messy looking because I couldn't get a nice hard edge with my pastel. And again, this is where your blender will come in handy because you can actually push that around and push it into the paper. So the reason you've got dust there is because it hasn't sort of been grabbed by the paper. And we call the paper, well, pastel paper has tooth. They say it has tooth. So if you can imagine teeth and then crumbs going down in between them, that's the sort of effect this paper has because pure, pastels are pure pigment. So it, there's nothing else in them other than a bit of binder. So by running around like that, I'm getting it to hang onto the paper and pushing it in a little bit more. Ruby. Ruby is my new word today. I don't think I've ever said that as often until today. So there we go. So I reckon that's looking pretty good. Now, see we've got those little spiky bits on the edge of the leaf down through here and also down through there. Uh, you know, it's if, you, if you're into the detail, you could have a crack at, it that, at that. Let's see what we can do with this dark green. I'm just going to see if I can do a few little spiky sort of shapes. It's a bit tricky with the thick pastel, not quite doing what I want it to do but maybe that'll be enough just to give us an idea of the texture of the leaf. Probably would be. So I'm just doing little dabs, little sharp marks as I come around the edge like that, just to indicate the rough edge of the leaf. And then we'll have to do the same thing on the, the light side, because it's also got a bit of a rough edge. Let's see if we can make this work too. So to get this harder mark, we've got to press a bit firmer. And again, I'm just going to do these little, little soft lines like that. Oh, that's working quite nicely. And the light on the dark is really effective, isn't it? So we've got this gorgeous shadow happening. And then a little bit of the light. You might need to wipe your pastel off in between marks because what it's going to do is pick up the red and the green underneath. But that's working quite well. So I've cleaned it off and I can just run back around the edge a bit to kind of push those colours in a bit more so it all looks like it's one thing and not little pieces. There we are. So I think that leaf worked out rather nicely. 
we might leave that right there and not muck around anymore. Next thing we want to do is, is join the leaf off onto the stem up here. So just, you can see there's a bit of red in that color there. So put your, use your light green first. I haven't used that mid green at all. Maybe I didn't need it after all. Sometimes you don't use all the colors. Sometimes you've got to go get back and find more, just depends. So I've got the light green stem coming up here onto the main stalk. All right, let's put a bit more of that in there. And then you can see on the stem, there's a little bit of red just on the edge there. So we're gonna do a tiny bit of red. Oh, just put crumbs everywhere. Because I've got a really sharp edge on here, because it's a square shape, I can literally just push that down and lift off again, hopefully. Might be enough. Enough red on there that I can now blend that in with my blender. While I've got it in my hand, I'm just gonna pop a bit of it up here on the tip of the stem, because you can see that's got that brownie red top on it. A bit of red on there, and then I'll throw some dark green into it as well, and then that will make it more brown and more muddy. So when you know what colours will do, just tip off dust, um, it's good because you can kind of go, oh, if I put that on there, that'll create that. So having that knowledge and experience is helpful. So I'm just going to use this little blender. If you don't have a blender, let's try with fingers, just in case you don't have a blender. So I'm get, see, I'm, I'm using my delicate ring finger. Just going to push that up gently, gently into the stem like that. A bit much maybe, but that's okay. Um, we'll just leave it as is for now. So it's a little bit too red. Let's pop a bit more dark green in that just to muddy it up a little bit. Just a very tiny little bit of dark green. See how that's just muddied it up, made it a little more gray. So now it's not too bright. While I've got that in my hand, I'm just gonna add it to this little knob on the top as well. Now you could let that just sit there. If you're happy with how it's looking, you can leave it sitting there. You don't always have to blend pastels. Um, you can just leave them on the surface like that. And generally when I am working on something um, maybe more detailed than this, I'll start off blending. And then as you get to the final layers and the more detail, you kind of stop blending and you just let the pastel sit on the surface. Lovely. Now I'm going to pick up this bit of charcoal because sometimes charcoal is really helpful too, just to kind of blend and push things around and give you a bit more uh, dark rather than a, you know, purple or a purple or a black even. So charcoal is often a nice option if you're looking for a bit of shadow but nothing too strong. Okay, there we are. That's quite good. All right, so now we need to look back at the stem. So you can see we did the stem in a really bright green, but I think we need to kind of quieten that down a little bit. If you look at your image, you can see it's quite yellow and bright on either end. So up the top and then down the bottom where it meets the cherry, but the middle bit's got a bit more green in there. So let's add some of this dark green and just put it onto the right side, perhaps center, wherever it lands. Just pull a little bit of that down through there really gently. Don't want much. And then if you find a finger or a blender, I'm going to try finger, just in case you don't have a blender, so we can do this together. And you just want to pull it down, okay? So try not to kind of rub it too much. You just want to kind of start at the top and then pull down like that. And that should just give you enough of a blend to create a little bit of tone and variation in the green. Cool. All right. Oh, I just spotted on the top of the leaf on that light section, I've got some little kind of veiny things going on in there. So I'm going to just grab my dark green, do a few little soft marks in there. Just really light little squiggly marks, nothing to define. And then I'm just going to kind of smudge them a bit. So the lovely thing about pastels is you can kind of smudge it all and soften it off and blend it off. There we go, that'll do. That'll do. Everything's an interpretation of what you create. So you don't always have to do exactly what's there. Um, as long as you, you know, are happy with the outcome 
and achieve what you want to achieve, then you know it doesn't have to be a replica of the thing. It's your version of it. All right, I'm pretty happy with all that now. And then we'll come back down into our cherry. We'll add a bit of light and pop a shadow underneath. And then we should be pretty much done. So let's grab the white pastel. Now make sure when, you, when you're using white, if you want it to be nice and white, make sure you give it a good clean. So you make sure it's nice and clean. Your, your pastels, when they live together in boxes and things, they pick up from each other. So they get really, really grubby. Sometimes you can't even tell what color they are until you give them a wipe. So paper towel is brilliant for that because it's got a bit of texture. So it tends to clean them up quite nicely. Sometimes I'll pick up what I think is a white and it'll be a gray or vice versa. <laughs> All right, so what we want is a nice, nice edge on here. What we're gonna do is draw a line with this. So we're not gonna lie it down flat. We're just gonna use the edge of it. And if you look at your, your picture, you can see there's a shine on that little S bend that we did at the beginning. So I'm just gonna pull it across. So you gotta be fairly confident here. You could go lightly at first and just gently mark it all out and then go over it again. Let's do that just to be sure. Okay, so that's about where I wanna put it. I think that'll work nicely. So you can see there's a little break in the white just here at the base of the stem. So that might be where the stem is breaking the light direction. So maybe we'll just leave that as it is and leave, leave it out. But to get it nice and white, you want to press pretty hard. So once you're sure of where your shine has to be, just go back in, press reasonably hard to get that shine on there. Okay. Ideally, if you have a charcoal pencil like I do, then that might be a better option. If you find that the pastel's too chunky and hard to get a fine line, sometimes your pencils are great. And you can get pastel pencils. So you can buy sets of them or you can buy them separately. They're wonderful for your fine lines and your detail. All right, now I've just noticed there's another little bit of shine just across here. I'm just gonna press lightly this time and I've got the pastel on its side. This is a short, stumpy bit. If you've got long pastels, you might need to break them. It's kind of sad when you have to do that, but sometimes you just got to. All right, so that's a little bit too sharp, that line. So what we want to do is kind of blur it off a little bit. And that requires, again, blending with your finger. So you want to, again, find a clean finger, as clean as you can. And what I'm going to do is pull it down in towards the cherry. So it softens off that line and, and just blur, blurs it off a little bit into the cherry. Okay. And then if you feel like you lost some of your shine, so I think I've, I've lost a little bit of it, it's gonna come back in and press hard again and put it back in just where it's really white. This is why I like to save the white for last because you can't get any whiter than that. And then if you want to, and I, I know it's not on there, but I just feel like I need to add a bit of a zhush there or something, a bit of a shine on the top. And when you want to do a little shine like that with your white or even yellow, maybe we didn't use yellow. It's two colors we picked out and never used, if that's okay. So sometimes if you want to add a little shine, you can just Put your pastel on its side like that, short piece. So if you've got long ones, you don't want to break it and then just do a little zhush and lift off and leave it. Lovely. Okay, so it's, it's a little bit messy. You might want to come back in with a blender and kind of soften it off a bit more, tidy up the edges. Just refine things slightly. The other cool color to use, if you don't like using white, I really like the white on this, but you could potentially use a very light yellow. Light yellow is often a lovely option for shine, especially for sunshine. It's just a nice, you know, something a little bit different. I just noticed we need to pop a bit more dark just behind here. 
to indicate, you know, there's a little dip there. So if you haven't got enough dark in there, just add a bit more purple and then pull it up against in towards the edge again. That might help to indicate that that's a little hole. So all those little subtle things, just you've got to look out for that stuff. And then if you feel like you want to add a bit more red, come back with your red again and then just brighten up in some of those spots where you think you might want, want it to be brighter again. So you can always come back over like that and refine things. So this is what happens. You kind of get to the end now and start to look at the details. So we've done all the big blocking stuff on the cherry and now we can start to look at the details and how we can you know, really bring it alive with a little bit more information. And this is where you don't blend anymore. So you just kind of rub the pastel on and then let it sit. So that's starting to look a lot like the picture. Coolio. And then the final thing, because I because we've got a cherry there, it's it's not really, you don't really want it to float around. So I'm just going to try charcoal and put a bit of shadow under here. So you can see in the picture, there's a very slight shadow just around the base of it, which again is an indicator of which direction the light's coming from. So if you're ever wanting to figure out, you know, where's the light, always look for the shadows and, and where they are. And then I can just softly push this charcoal in like that. Um, and I also want to say, don't ever use graphite pencil with, it, with um, pastel, they don't play nicely at all. Just doesn't work. There we go. So that's our cherry now sitting on the table, all lush and beautiful. You can actually go a little bit darker just under there and then pull that out again. So you can see charcoal works really nicely with pastel. Lovely. Nice, nice. And of course, don't forget to pop your name on. So you can use charcoal or pencil, whatever you like. Put your name on there. And you have a work of art. I hope you've enjoyed today's class. Um, I have really enjoyed doing this with you. And as I mentioned earlier, if you do want to do more video classes with me, I have a lot on my website available um, for intermediates and beginners. They're all pastel. That's the only medium I really do. Um, I do like to dabble in other things, but this is the one I love best. I'm just peeling off my tape to make sure it doesn't tear my page. Um, yeah, so lots there if you are interested in buying those. They're $19.50 Australian. And with that, you'll get your notes page, your reference image, and the access to the video unlimited forever. So there's no time limit on that. You'll have the video for as long as you want. And that means you'll be able to replay it or pause it or whatever. So um, yeah, pop over to my website, deliciousart.com.au for more information. And I look forward to seeing you again. Bye for now.